Chinese capital city is the region's industrial center. Here, amongst the busy heavy industries, there is a very special business that has the most far-reaching effect on people's lives. A company called African Beekeepers manufactures beehives in their hundreds and, in addition, they harvest honey from their hives around the country. Beehives have to withstand severe weather conditions from heavy rain to long periods of hot sun. They have to be well made. Assembling has to be carried out with care so all the different pieces will fit together to create the complete hive. This is an example of an environmentally responsible business where people benefit from a financial return but with minimum damage to the environment. Nothing is wasted in this factory. Used beeswax from broken combs is heated and poured into forms. Then it is allowed to cool until it solidifies into thin slabs of wax. Next, the slabs are fed through a press that has the exact indentations of a bee comb. The wax is strong and very pliable, so the end result is a long mat of comb. The long mats of beeswax are cut into strips, three inches wide and of the exact length to fit inside a manufactured hive. The strips of beeswax, called starter combs, will be suspended on wires in the frames inside the hive to withstand travel. Finally, the wires are heated momentarily with an electric current so the wax melts onto the wire. African beekeepers build hives for anyone who is interested in buying them and is prepared to look after them. They plan to increase the number of their own hives to 3,000. Even in the center of Nairobi, there are bees that, in this case, can scent the wax in these reconditioned hives. Took on our strips. We have on strip. these frames, on these brood frames, we have comb starters. These are comb strips, and we don't put full sheets. We just put strips. This comb starter, one, it 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 it, it attracts the bees because of the smell, and two, it attracts the bees because of the smell of the wax. It makes the bees build the combs on the frame in one line instead of haphazardly. When permission from landowners has been given, empty hives are placed in habitats favored by bees. Okay, and the entrance is right The entrance here. is a long gap on one side with a ridge for the bees to land on okay. when returning to the hive. This is the main hive where the queen will live with her workers. Honey is never removed from this section. When bees have colonized the hives, the entrance is closed with newspaper at night when all the bees are inside. Next day, they're carried to a vehicle for onward travel to be placed all together at a single location. In some countries where bees have been destroyed by chemicals, bees have to be brought in on lorries to pollinate the crops and then moved on again after they have performed their vital work. In Africa, we are fortunate to still have enough bees left that have not been destroyed by insecticides. We should keep it that way. As long as there are flowers in the area, the bees will immediately begin building new combs and rearing young. That's a line of 60 hives and well over 2 million bees. If one thinks about it, that is a lot of pollination taking place and a lot of honey being produced at the same time. Periodically, the African beekeepers' teams check how well the bees are progressing with making honey. The combs in the bottom section of the hive are never removed from the frames. The frames are allowed to fill up and this is where the queen bee lays her eggs and the young are cared for. All the frames in this hive are full. It shows there is a strong and healthy queen in residence and there are plenty of flowers in the area. It's time to start the next stage. A second section of hive, called a super, is placed on top. There is a gap inside between the two sections that the queen will not cross. 
The worker bees fill up the frames in the top section, but without the queen to lay eggs, there will be no larvae, so the honey will be quite clean. Special clips are used to stop baboons from raiding the hives, sometimes at night when the bees are quiet. The bees know the queen is inside and will quickly re-enter the hive. Later, when the bottom half is filled with combs, it is likely the top sections, the supers, will also contain honey. When it is time to harvest honey from the hives, the team knows the importance of taking adequate precautions against being stung. These hives have been set up on community land and the community members will be paid for the honey. The best way to subdue angry bees without hurting them is to blow smoke at them in limited doses. Special smokers have been designed for this purpose. Here we go. Professional beekeepers know just how much smoke to use. To the uninitiated, angry bees can seem terrifying. No one can deny that it would be suicidal to be here without the right protective clothing. These men know what they're doing. They have harvested honey from their hives hundreds of times. As more hives are opened, thousands more bees come out to defend them. When a super is found to be full of honey, it is removed and as many bees as possible are shaken out so that they can return to their queen. In cases where the number of bees and the amount of honey warrants it, two supers are added. These bees will soon sort themselves out and return to their queen. Beekeepers across the world are very conscious of the declining numbers of bees, not only in Africa, but everywhere. No one is too sure what the reasons are for this decline, but the effects on agriculture are already being felt. A small mite called a varroa kills the larvae of the bees and has resulted in huge losses in some areas. These beekeepers are looking for ways to increase the number of swarms in their hives. They take frames that contain larvae of exactly the right age and transfer them to another hive that has no queen. The workers in the new hive find they are without a queen. This spurs them to feed royal jelly to a single larva with the result that that particular worker larva turns into a queen. The empty spaces in the original hive are filled with new frames containing starter combs so the queen will begin laying eggs within a few days. Then the beekeepers will have two complete swarms of bees. As the beekeepers move along the line removing and replacing supers, yet more and more bees become angry. Very often beekeepers remove honey at night when the bees are confused by the dark. But with a thousand hives countrywide, all producing honey during much the same period of the year, there isn't time to work only at night. Scientists and beekeepers estimate a healthy hive will contain 60,000 bees. At that rate, there must be several million bees swarming around the men. <laughs> It is inevitable that some bees get killed, but compared to the total number in these hives, the percentage is very small. The supers are carefully stacked on the trailer after most of the bees have been given time to return to their queen. It would not be in the interest of the beekeepers to destroy bees unnecessarily. that end up on the trailer can still find their way back to their queen.
shedding bees all the time, they drive around close to the hives. Bees normally fly four kilometers from their hive to forage, so they will easily find their way back. All the supers containing the honey are marked and then weighed in the presence of a member of the community. The weights are entered in a book, so all the community members can see the results of the harvest. Once back in Nairobi, the supers will be weighed by themselves to give an accurate figure of the amount of honey. The bee stings embedded in this glove shows what would have happened if gloves had not been used. All that the community on whose land the hives are placed has to do is make sure the hives are not damaged or stolen. In Nairobi, the supers are taken into the African Beekeepers Honey Extraction Center. The supers are weighed again to check the figures taken in the field. A special machine removes most of the wax the bees have used to seal each storage cell in the combs. Each frame is then carefully placed in the extractor. When the electric motor is switched on, the frames are spun at high speed. The honey will be forced out of the combs. And there is what all this is about. Combs are now completely empty of honey. All the way along their length and on both sides, there is not a drop of honey left in the cells. The combs will be used again. The amount of honey produced by so few hives is staggering and one can only imagine how much work the bees have put into producing it. Finally, simple sedimentation tanks trap any impurities. There is very little need for high-tech machinery in this business. There is hardly any negative impact on the environment, but nevertheless, this is a business where people have to be paid and operating costs have to be recouped. To bring the honey to the point where it will yield a financial return has taken much effort and outlay by the whole team. These jars are a fraction of the 12 tons of honey harvested annually by African beekeepers. But there is more to this than making money. Every one of these jars tells us there are lots of bees out there pollinating and fertilizing flowers that benefit us. If fertilization is inadequate because of lack of bees and other insects, flowers will not develop and crops will be poor. Large farms need pollinating insects as much as small-scale ones owned by individuals. A plant's growth is the same everywhere. Fertilization is the beginning of new seeds that will have a good chance to grow into new plants if we employ good farming methods. The seeds may bloom and provide the bees with food, be pollinated and thereby fertilized so that the cycle goes on endlessly. The choice of how we manage these resources is up to us.